Raghu, uh, coming back to again one of the major health concerns that we face nowadays is weight and especially weight reduction. Uh, why, uh, why do you think obesity has spread so much? It's almost become a global epidemic now. Uh, what are the reasons according yeah, to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think there's a uh, major, major uh, flaw in the, in the kind of food system that we have today. Um, uh, yes, there is, uh, you know, the, the increased consumption of fat and sugar, uh, in increased consumption of refined fat, fast food, and uh, processed food. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a, there's a book called Fast Food Nation by Eric uh, Sklosser, uh, talking about the American uh, obesity. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's, obesity is not just confined to the rich. Uh, it, uh, today you find obesity among the poorest of the poor also. In, okay. in Africa, in Mexico, in the third world countries, uh, people who, uh, who actually do not get enough calorie, but then they, um, you find obesity. This is a strange phenomena of the you know, 20th or 21st century. Why hunger, malnutrition and obesity should coexist? Typically, you see an obese person, you would simply say he is war eaten. He's right. eating too much. That's the excess consumption, mm -hmm. indisciplined way of uh, life, all that. Uh, that's not exactly true. Uh, because you see, if you eat refined uh, food, uh, you know, devitalized, uh, you know, devoid of nutrients, then it ends up being lodged as fat in the human body. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, you may be eating small quantity of food, less quantity of food, less calorie of food, but that itself has chance of being locked up as fat. Once it's locked up as fat, it doesn't budge. You know, it's very difficult to, uh, it's not easy to utilize energy from locked up fat. Because you see, over the ages, you know, for a long period, we talk about 6.5 million years of our ape ancestry. Mm -hmm. All through the ancestry, we have seen food insecurity, famine, drought, next meal was always uncertain. So we have genetically evolved to store the excess energy for the rainy day. But okay. the rainy day never happens because there's enough food, enough food availability, accessibility, abundant food available, cheap food available, uh, subsidized food available. So uh, there is a mismatch to what our genes have been originally programmed uh, when they went through these difficult days for millions of years and what the situation prevails today. Hmm. So this is an anthropological reason. There is hmm. also another reason they say that there is this uh, thing called thrifty gene syndrome. When a mother is malnourished hmm. and uh, the fetus uh, also is malnourished within hmm. the womb, Hmm. Uh, you know, there's the nice. I mean, somebody has termed this way that uh, Wordsworth, William Wordsworth, uh, said that the child is the father of man. Right. But this guy says that uh, fetus is the father of man because all your metabolic status, metabolic rate gets decided in the fetus, uh, depending on the nutrition availability in the mother's womb. Hmm. So, because mother is malnourished, mother is famished. You know, you you always end up having. Uh, the fetus, malnourished fetus. So the metabolic rate gets reduced. When you're born underweight and you start consuming excess food thanks to uh, economy, you know, the uh, easy, uh, not easy, but uh, easy availability of food, right. you know, excess, I mean, the, the, the wealth creation and all that. Uh, so there is again going to be a mismatch between your program that happened in the fetus and the lifestyle that you lead today. These are the two reasons that they talk. And the food that we eat being refined uh, you know, mm. uh, floods easily to your uh, body and gets stored up uh, as uh, fat because blood can't hold sugar and th things like that. So there is this coexistence of uh, obesity and hunger together. Mm. People who are obese are also hungry. People mm. who are hungry are also obese. This is a strange phenomena that we face today. Mm. Uh, but it's an epidemic proportion, you know, in, in the developed world, we talk about 60% of people suffering from obesity. A doctor friend of mine who works in, mm. uh, in Florida, in the US, uh, Dr. Dwaraknath, good friend of mine, he keeps saying, saying that some of his patients, he is forced to send them to zoo uh, for CT and MRI scanning. I asked him why. He said, no, no, they don't fit into 
uh, the CTM and MRI machines Human in the hospitals. Meant so, for humans. Yeah, so in the zoo they have the, the machines for hippopotamus, the elephants and all that. And uh, you know when I he hear this, it's a sad satire or I don't know, it's a sad story on right. on the very development and progress that mm. the human beings have to be sent to zoo for a CT and MRI scanning. That says it all. So we have a se serious problem of obesity. Mm. Of course obesity is a bedrock again, is the main reason for emergence of uh, diabetes, cancer, mm. uh, cardiovascular problem and whole lot of other problems. Right. Um, do you, what do you, um, in your study, do you, what kind of attitude do you see uh, among common people towards obesity? Do, do some of, do most of them even recognize it as, uh, let's not say disease, but some kind of a disorder or a, uh, on the path to some kind of a disorder? Mm -hmm. You see, this again, you see, the being obese uh, or uh, mal, uh, you know, being uh, a bag of bone or less uh, nourished uh, has also got to do with the uh, prevailing social situation. Uh, for example, I understand that uh, uh, there's a book called Fat is a Social Phenomena. Hmm. Uh, because see, when there is drought and famine and hmm. food insecurity, men always preferred uh, uh, fat women, I mean, in the sense, hmm. people who uh, are obese. And in Rome, hmm. uh, the, the people were fed excess fat to become obese, because obesity was a sort of uh, social status. Okay. Because when you have famine, you know, hmm. you always have think, your um, psychology always works for the other extreme. Hmm. So, as you say, to in the, among the poor, even today, there's a desire to put on weight. Okay. Those who do not have food, those who still right. suffer from food insecurity. But among the elite and the, uh, you know, urban and, uh, you know, the educated class again, there is mm. this tendency that they say, uh, stout is out, thin is in. Right. Uh, but it is leading to anorexia, which right. is another problem. Extreme. Extreme other problem. Extreme. Other yeah. extreme uh, problem. Right. Um, and also, um, for example, if they consume all this refined, um, um, flour or refined products that we get nowadays or some kind of a junk food and all. Is there a way to burn those calories out through physical exercise or they are of no use? I mean, even if we do some kind of exercise. Yeah. See, it's a good question. See, see, what happens, the people and companies which give junk food, mm -hmm. whether it is a soft drinks companies, the soft drinks is always say, you know, what's wrong in taking one or two soda as long as you right. can run for 10 kilometer? Right. You know, so they want to shift uh, the responsibility right. of, oh, you are irresponsible, mm. you are indisciplined, mm. uh, you don't know how to take a drink and still enjoy your uh, life. Right. This is, in my opinion, you know, this is shifting the responsibility. I give a wrong product, mm. I don't want to own the responsibility, mm. and I make you responsible because you are not running. Right. So, so this is one way, you see, as a responsible food company, anybody should give first and foremost, hmm. uh, healthy food. Right. Do not give enough empty calories, do not give junk food, hmm. reduce sugar, fat. And I understand, I was reading recently a company saying that in order to reduce fat and sugar, sugar in particular hmm. in their product, they have a 15 year plan. Hmm. I said, why don't you start tomorrow? Right. You can, you know, you can reduce sugar and fat hmm. and uh, provide healthy food. Hmm. So the individual responsibility is always there. But there are, if there are systemic problems, hmm. if the ecosystem provides 99% uh, wrong food and 1% good food, you land up eating the wrong food right. that is available, that is seen, that hmm. is visible, that is attractive, that is enticing, hmm. uh, that uh, manipulates your mind. Hmm. This is, uh, some people also say this, this, this is a brand washing, like brainwashing. Right. You know, we are brand washed. Right. So, so there is th that kind of a uh, situation. Hmm. Now, uh, no. Um, also, what I wanted to ask is, uh, responsibility is something uh, we still need to look forward uh, from, say, the market or companies who produce these goods. Uh, but is physical exercise at all a solution, or it it will just do half the job? or 20% of the job, hmm. rest one has to leave it. Hmm. No, you see, uh, physical exercise is no doubt important. Right. But you see, you are, your physical exercise uh, should not be 
uh, a, a thing to compensate for right. eating bad food. Right. Your bad food and good exercise should go hand in hand. Right. Right. Uh, you know, you, you can't set right the wrong that you are done by eating junk right, food right. by simply exercising. Right. So you see, how long can you do that? Exactly, it's not possible. See, fundamental. See, you you can't first plug the long, you know, the right leaking hole, hmm. or then plugging a wrong hole. Right. You plug the leaking hole, then of course, physical exercise is always important. You hmm. can have a good health. But you see, on the other hand, today, if you see. Hmm. We the food we eat should be slow releasing, should be complex carbohydrate, hmm. should be healthy fat, should be of uh, more of fruits and vegetable. Hmm. You see, they always say, what is a good food? They say, half of your food should be uncooked, and if preferable, half of should be uncultivated, cultiv cultivated, as yeah. far as possible. It may not yeah. be possible all the time, hmm. but if it is possible, hmm. because it is uncultivated, uncooked and then half cooked hmm. that would make a good meal uh, 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 so uh, so uh, personal responsibility of exercise hmm. uh, exercise is a part and parcel of good living no doubt about right. it but that is not to compensate as i said right. for a bad food right um, and then talking about uh, the uh, healthy uh, lifestyle what are the ways or uh, what uh, what can we do to maintain, uh, what is a sustainable way rather mm -hmm. to maintain good health? Yeah, yeah. Of course, eating right food in the right quantity right. and quality. Uh, right food does simply means not not be so very, you know, well calculated, balanced and all that kind of uh, culturally sound. Hmm. Uh, what our grandmothers ate um, with, a, with a diversity of food, wide variety of food. Where I, when you say you should take 200 to 300 gram of fruit, that doesn't mean take one banana or two banana. Right. That's not fruit. Right. There are plenty of fruits available out there in the world. Mm. You must seek out and eat as many as possible. Mm. Though there is a depth of diversity, declining availability and all right. that, you must try to pick and choose the best. I would say that for me, always when the best city is one where I get good fruits and vegetables, where I have a good bookshop. I mean, that's good life for me. Right. So, you know, right. you have to identify a good fruit mm -hmm. shop and a vegetable shop where you get fresh fruit and, you know, reliable quality and all that. Mm. So that's the way to buy things, you know, mm. and have as much as uh, good variety. And pleasure principles should not be uh, divorced from. You know, mm. eating mm. Is, is deeply linked to pleasure right. Uh, right. principle. Right. Eating is eating is not done with, uh, uh, like you mentioned sometimes back, that, that you know, our body focused, right. the uh, standardized body exactly. uh, makes you eat what standardized food. Mm. That I think is, is, there's, a, there's a nice uh, m m poetry by a Goan poet. He says, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, oh Lord, uh, uh, he's very old and he's saying this, he's written this poetry, Borker, a beautiful one. He says, oh Lord, let it not be my turn, oh Lord of death, let it mm. not be my turn today. Not today, please. I have fish curry for dinner. <laughs> you know? Right. There's a longing and a desire to eat food and enjoy food. Right. Uh, there's another lady, a French lady, I understand she was 104 mm. and she felt the heartache and she felt that she's having a stroke. Mm. Then there was some desert. She said, please pass the desert. I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right, so right, there, right. there is a pleasure principle deeply embedded in our living. So that's an enjoyment, but it should be disciplined rather than, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's also how you can eat food. For example, uh, they say your body is like a, is a, a sack of uh, grain. Mm. Don't fill the grain uh, until uh, its mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. Leave some space for tying. Right. Leave some space for tying. Right. So that is some simple way. The mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. statement is that your body is like a bank account. You put in money and you don't withdraw. It grows with interest. Mm. You see. So th th so you, you should know you should withdraw means you should be spending your energy. Mm. But the kind of food you eat is very important. Mm. And uh, your ex energy expenditure is also important. Mm. Typically, the redu weight reduction is like this, body weight management. Mm. Eight, about 8,000 calories you put on one, week, one kilo of weight. You reduce right. 8,000 calorie, you mm. reduce one kilo of weight. Mm. Uh, so, uh, what is the ideal weight? We always know, mm. uh, you know, the, the standard chart and all that. You always know that what's the kind of, you, it's not just the, just the size, you know, but the how much of fat composition in the body and things like that. Mm. Uh, so, uh, a right food, I think we should not be over obsessed with these parameters also. Right. Enjoy the food, wholesome food, 
and mm. culturally you know right food mm. i would say that's a good life right and nowadays we see this obsession with um, well, right like you said the parameters of a structured body so you have to stick to that structure this is the length this is the this is the weight and everything so how far is this actually considered normal yeah or yeah. is this actually normal? Yeah, you see, the, the, we always have to, uh, uh, you know, they say the truth progresses not because mm. you you repeat the old facts, but you refute and uh, rebut the false ones. Mm. Uh, World Health Organizations, uh, mm. you know, is accused of uh, projecting milk substitute fed babies as standard weights uh, babies. Okay. So that was a problem that has mm -hmm. been changed now. Mm. So we have to be very careful with the standards. Mm. Uh, standardization. Uh, sometimes is to eliminate the diversity. Mm. Of course, we should not forget mm. that we have to eat the right food from the beginning, from the infancy, from the mother's womb. Mm. For, uh, uh, of course, there are factors like age of marriage which mm. are dependent uh, on all this. But if you if you uh, if you have a genetic potential, mm. say maybe my genetic potential was to reach six feet. Mm. Had I got the right food during the infancy, during the weaning, post weaning, you know, right food, you mm. know, so then I would have been able to express my gene potential. Right. So nothing wrong in being able to express your gene potential, right food at the right time. Uh, you see, uh, within half an hour, my mother has to give the mother's milk. That is denied in most of the cases. Mm. In six months time exactly, you must introduce solid food. Many of them don't introduce. Hmm. There is another problem. Hmm. Uh, so uh, in this way, there is a formative age. Uh, growth faltering that happens during infancy and childhood hmm. is is done for a lifetime. Okay. So that there, you know, if you if you if you take care of those formative years, childhood years, then your genes will express. Uh, you know the, this this whole uh, um, gene potential and the mm -hmm. nutrition. Uh, so you you reach your height and weight and all that. But then there if there is an overconsumption mm -hmm. of the fatty and sugary substances, empty calories, you will end up having a, a problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's less. Th that's why there is also this uh, this question of uh, uh, somebody said I have discovered the obesity gene. Mm -hmm. Then uh, somebody said why don't you name it hand to mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you see, you, you take care of this, rest is taken care. Right, right. So this gene focus thing, of course, today the whole lot of issues, the bariatric surgeries, mm. you know, reducing the stomach size. Mm. You, know, you know, where have you gone, you know? So you, 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 you need to bypass the nutrient absorption. Mm. Uh, you, you, you uh, like you said, the medical intervention mm. into your gut, mm. into your colon, into your stomach. Right. I will reduce your stomach and make you a right weight. Right. So, so say, but what is more important hmm. is to make sure that there is right food available. Should we be taxing junk food? Should we be uh, punishing the wrong product? Hmm. See, in, in, in France now they talk about, you see a food pack, hmm. there is a color code. If it is if it is fully full red circle, there is a proposal by a, a non-governmental organization. If it, there is a full red color, which means it is junk. If it is a full green color, it's very nutritious. Hmm. Then the color keeps on changing. So any common man, because you can't go through this maze of nutrition information. Right. Hundreds of additives. Right. Long list of nutrients. Hmm. You know, if you say the, the vitamins, alpha talk overalls, beta talk overalls, omega talk overalls, all kinds of fatty acid, proteins and I mean, see, you see, you could, one way of drowning the common man is to give him too much of information. Right. Then you get, you get drowned in the sea of information, hmm. then I will make you catch the broken reed. Right. So this, th that is very important that you give, you make sure that the very available food of course, nobody has to worry about fruits, vegetables, mm. and grains as it is, uh, if they are wholesome. Mm. But then, you if the processed food, if they are adding too much of fat, too much of sugar, too much of you know additives, then you have to need to be careful mm. and how you can you know prevent them from uh, you know consume, making them available and making them fat and you know obese and all that, and then then you you, you always say you no, know, I have a solution for diabetes, I have a solution for you know so many technical solutions you mm. can come out with, but fundamentally if you are going wrong, mm. uh, I think that's where we should be focused. Right.